A very good morning to all of you. Welcome back to the channel. So here we are starting with the analysis for 31st of July 2023. So we'll be adding up more newspapers from today. So firstly, taking up the Hindu. So total breakdown of law and order in Manipur. This is according to the opposition, the collective opposition that has been named as India. And here are basically two things now. The role of opposition and the situation in Manipur. So I have repeated this a lot of number of times ki kya possible dimensions and just be clarity hona important. Hai. So 10,000 children in the relief camps in Manipur and sessions for their stress relief. So mental health problem. Obviously because of all this trauma specifically on children and obviously children ke upar bahut zyada impact hote hai and obviously us cheez ko mind se nikalna is it is going to be a task uske alawa jo matlab aam log hai wahan ke community hai un logo ke upar bhi jo impact hua hai that is also massive so you can see this picture there is an art competition so is tarike se basically stress relief activities ki ja rahi hai in the relief camps so this is one dimension matlab Similar lines, but you need to also think ki kya aur ho sakta hai. This is one part, stress relief. Uske alawa jo basic services hai, kya wo available hai. Aane wale time, obviously, jin logo ke ghar destroy ho gaya, ghar jala diye gaye hai, unka kya hooga. Employment opportunities, unki employment livelihood, wo kaise aage sustain karenge. So, ye sab cheeze important ho jati hai. So in Pakistan, at least 44 people have been killed, nearly 100 injured in a suicide bomb attack in Pakistan. So powerful blast triggered by a suicide bomber killed at least 44 people. And this was in the tribal district of Pakistan's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa province, which is bordering Afghanistan. So basically, when the Taliban regime came in Afghanistan, ke andar, we are seeing that SA activities, terrorist activities, the number has increased in Pakistan. So explosion, it took place at the um, Jamaat Ulema Islam Fuzzle Workers Convention in Khar, which is capital of Bajor Tribal District. So, manual scavenging ki baat kare, aapko pata hona chahiye. Supreme Court judgments kya hai, iske upar jo law hai, important provisions kya hai. But despite that, we are seeing, malab, obviously, Supreme Court ne apni judgment mein clearly bola hai ki it needs to be completely prohibited. And uske baad bhi in reality, ground situation ki hum baat kare, to still it continues, the practice continues. And again, iska alternative kya hai, if not like manual scavenging, to what machines do we have? So, uspe bhi we need to obviously need funds to have those machines and technology. So ministry doubts the app's numbers on the cases of manual scavenging. So data on the Swachhata Abhiyan, which is a mobile app hai, of social justice and empowerment ministry. Uh, it identified 6,253 cases of manual scavenging in India. But ministry it is not sure if these numbers, they are authentic or not. Agar ek bhi aisa case ho hai, toh, that is also shameful. So, number chahe zada ho, kam ho, but it is happening. Wo cause of concern hai maare liye. On the editorial page, firstly, the relevance of humanities as resistance. So songs, they are sneaky things. They can slip across borders, proliferate in prisons as well, penetrate the hard shells. The right song at the right moment, it could change history. 
so this is coming from Keith Seeger. So study of humanities and liberal arts, it is underpinned by the question of value. Matlab, value kya hai? What is the value of humanities? Ya hum jo skills ki baat karte, liberal arts ki baat karte, what is the value of it? So that is underpinned by the question of value with the life enriching beliefs and ideas articulated by artists and philosophers. So any attempt to understand the relevance of humanities in the murky age of neoliberalism is a move towards confronting social and political magnitude of the multiplicity, exile, and more than anything, the inevitability of debate in a true democracy. So it's indeed an exercise in the shaping our resistance against ignorance, animosity, and forgetting. So that's the whole idea about this and this whole article based based. So relevance of humanity is what is today's time. We talk about we are living in the new liberal age. So if we talk about art, it indeed enriches thought and action. Malab, you can also relate it to again a uh, stress burster and kya mental impact hota hai, mental relief milta hai agar you're practicing any art, any skill as a hobby also. So we need to inculcate a commitment to aesthetics as a powerful means of emancipatory politics in times of fundamental transition. So we who live today have slowly begun to remember our history, our poets, songs also. So a life lived in art it struggles to transmit the voices of the masses to the powerful for whom it is increasingly becoming difficult to ignore the rising tide of radical social inquiry and irreverent, irreverent thinking. So basically through songs, through poems, a message transmit karne ke koshish ki jati hai from the masses to the powerful, to the people who are in power. And obviously that cannot be... You, we can say ignored or that cannot be overlooked. So ek se, that is an important media. So there needs to be a commitment to aesthetics as a powerful means of emancipatory politics in times of fundamental transition. So here is a more detail. Mein hai. So focus on liberal arts. So a serious thought then has to be given to liberal arts in our universities, matlab humari education system mein, how that needs to be made a part of it. And here pe aap le kya sakte ho, the role of NEP 2020, matlab national education policy, vocational education say it can get connected. So it seems to have been pushed into the background of the state programs and funding as well. So even in terms of government policies and schemes, so liberal arts na zada promote nahi kiya jata. So it has gone somewhere in the background. So alas, I see the end of universities such as Vishwa Bharti at Shantaniketan or the Sabarmati Ashram at Ahmedabad at the hands of vicious right-wing forces. So we suffer an amnesia of universal humanism of Rabindranath Tagore's fearless mind and his belief in knowledge without confines or creative self-determination. So this is one idea in what Rabindranath Tagore he believed in, ki knowledge without confines or creative self-determination. So take the example of art under the third reach. So all centers of learning and the liberal arts. They were shut owing to the mindless fixation with the economic productivity that led to Hitler's intensely nationalist war machine. But in that time period, pe, jo bhi, you know, learning centers, the liberal arts ko promote karne the, training exercises ho rahi thi, wo completely shut down kar diye the because us time pe jo hum bol sakte it was madness for economic productivity for economic progress and growth sirf usi cheez ko focus kiya ja raha tha wohi cheez samne dikh rahi thi so this is why this term mindless fixation has been used here so all great thinkers they escaped from germany at that point of time we're talking about world war so one year after the allied victory the historian frederick he published the german catastrophe recommending creation of a both communities with ceremonies at numerous venues paying homage to great poets, literary figures and supplemented by the classical music of the greats. So basically, kahin kahin liberal arts or humanities wali fields hain, wo kahin kahin peechhe reh jati hain. 
So this was the only way of immunizing Germany against the onslaught of fascism. So hum our humanities program, agar pro humanities programs, ki baat kare, therefore, they have to be spirited enough to act as safeguards against the worst irrational thinking that shuts us from the wisdom of poetry and literature, philosophy and theology, the arts and history. So our humanities programs aise hone chahiye, they unme itne spirited hone chahiye ki wo khud me ek safeguard act kare against irrational thinking jo unke against voice raise karti hai and kahin na kahin unko dabane ki koshish karti hai. So undeniably then education, agar aap culture ki baat karo, education in culture, philosophy and art, usme potential hai to bring forth an advanced humanist society accomplished to oppose the rebirth of nationalism, the triviality of technology, the vulgarity of commerce, and the cultivated stupidity of the media and universities. So, is the se bhi, you know, education in art and culture, philosophy, and humanities becomes very, very important. So, this is one of the most important dimensions. So if we talk about deficiency of training in the liberal arts is what restricts political and academic leadership. So steepened in the love of arts, students, they will readily come together across divisions of class, race and religion and thereby erect a milieu opposed to absolutism. So even when we talk communalism or PC, discrimination, the basis of religion, race, caste, sex, so there is this arts, it can play an important constructive role in bringing people from diverse backgrounds together and ultimately oppose absolutism. So this is an important thing. So that is, we can say that in time mein relevance hai, how basically it can play an important role in our society in diverse ways. So foremost critical question before us is to see how and if academic scholarship that can challenge the corporate media and the state, evolving a new lexicon that can confront assumed assumptions of knowledge. So 1960s were a way to go about it in the face of contemporary politics, examining, questioning our social and historical situation. So our struggle still continues and I'm convinced Author says that I'm convinced that the memories of that time will be cherished by future generations and provide the basis for the renewal of struggles and campaigns for social justice and freedom of inquiry. So, thoda different article tha aaj, jo general topics are wo malab obviously jo political, economic, and global level pe cheese chal rahi hai, wo hum discuss karte rehte, but this was something different. So, here is a case study of Bitter Truths in Maharashtra's Sugar Fields. So, you will read this article and objectively you will just write this in, you can say, four or five sentences objectively. You will just write this in four or five sentences objectively. You will connect with GS4 Ethics and then obviously you can use it as a form of example or case study to substantiate any point in your answer as per the demand of the question. So mob violence, ki baat kare, mobocracy and controlling a crowd, kaise handling and management of crowd. So is regarding Supreme Court ki judgments ko dekhte hain, kya Supreme Court ne bola hai and accountability of center and states se regarding kya cheeze raise ki gai hain. So it's a matter of shame for the union government and several state governments also that Supreme Court has had to remind them of their consistent failure in the past five years to act against the lynching of and mob violence against Muslims and marginalized sections by cow vigilantes in particular. So, is the ke incidences dekhe gaye hai, but still, when we talk about the state government and the central government, so they have consistently failed to tackle the situation and ensure their prevention in future. So, following a petition by the National Federation of Indian Women highlighting this failure, Court Nebola. And it has asked the Ministry of Home Affairs, Maharashtra, Odisha, Rajasthan, Bihar, MP, Haryana to respond to this petition. So 2018, mein, the court in this 
केस ऑफ तहसीन एस ऊना वाला वर्सेज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया दो हजार अठारह का केस है हेड हेल्ड दैट इट वॉज दैक्रोस एंड ड्यूटी ऑफ द स्टेट टू प्रोटेक्ट लाइव ऑफ इट सिटीजन एंड दैट दी अथॉरिटीज दे हैव प्रिंसिपल ऑब्लीगेशन to prevent vigilantism of any kind so you need to you know put weight on these keywords matlab principal obligation bola gaya hai sacrosan duty of the state hai to protect the lives of the citizens unki zindagi ki baat ho rahi hai and obviously we know article 21 of the constitution fundamental right hai and kisi bhi tarike ka kisi bhi kind ka vigilantism ko prevent karna स्टेट की ड्यूटी है इट इज दैट प्रिंसिपल ऑब्लिगेशन टू डू दिस सो इट हैड कम अप विद द गाइडलाइंस सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने गाइडलाइंस भी इशू की है विच इंक्लूडेड डेजिग्नेशन ऑफ अ नोडल पुलिस ऑफिसर डिस्ट्रिक्ट लेवल पे एक पुलिस ऑफिसर अपॉइंट किया जाना चाहिए डेजिग्नेट किया जाना चाहिए फॉर दिस पर्पज हु विद द आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ डिस्ट्रिक्ट ब्लॉक लेवल पे विलेज लेवल पे जहाँ पे मॉब वॉयलेंस हुई है लिंचिंग्स हुई है रिसेंट ईयर्स में एंड हेल्प द पुलिस इंटेलिजेंस ऑल्सो to work towards tackling such incidences in coordination with the other government agencies so a nodal police officer appoint kiya jana chahiye so uska task kya hoga district level pe block level pe village level pe identify karna kon kon se aise areas hain jahan pe past mein aise humne cases dekhe hain mob lynchings hui hain and again then in coordination with police intelligence and baki government agencies इंश्योर कि ऐसे इंसिडेंसेस फ्यूचर में ना हो सो दे वर आल्सो टू बी एडेड बाय इनिशिएटिव ऑफ द होम मिनिस्ट्री आल्सो सो होम मिनिस्ट्री भी साथ रहेगी स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स इन सेंसिटाइजिंग द लॉ एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिशियल्स आल्सो वार्निंग द पब्लिक अबाउट क्या कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस हो सकते हैं इफ यू आर बेसिकली इंगेजिंग इन सच इंसिडेंसेज ऑफ मॉब वॉयलेंस और विजिलेंटिज्म अमंग अदर मेजर्स मतलब लोगों को भी अवेयर करना कि इफ दे आर फाउंड इन तो क्या पॉसिबल कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस हो सकते हैं तो इस में बेसिकली सेंसिटाइजेशन ऑफ लॉ में लॉ एनफोर्समेंट ऑफिशियल्स मिनिस्ट्री होम मिनिस्ट्री स्टेट गवर्नमेंट साथ में काम करेंगे सो दैट लिंचिंग मॉब वॉयलेंस का विजिलेंटिज्म ये सारे सिनोनिम्स uh, हम बोल सकते हैं एंड इनकरेक्ट इफोज फॉर द क्रिमिनल एंगेजिंग इन दिन वॉयेंस अगेंस्ट द माइनॉरिटीज फॉर द पर्पटेड रीजन ऑफ ट्रांसपोर्टिंग कैटल फॉर दिस लॉटर और कैटल नीड स्टिल है since the judgment so aise cases aaj bhi ho rahe hain and we see little progress done on the ground and especially north india ki agar hum baat kare so it points to the non challenge of the government so it does not take deductive powers to know that the ideology of the bjp at the center and in many of these states that allows for stereotyping and demonizing of the minorities has also played into this तो अपार्ट फ्रॉम विजिलेंटिज्म अगर हम सोशल इकोनॉमिक बॉयकॉट ऑफ द माइनॉरिटी कम्युनिटी की बात करें दैट इज आल्सो टेकन रूट इन द स्टेट्स जहां पे वी सी दे रिसीव पॉलिटिकल पैटर्नेज आल्सो सो ऑब्वियसली दिस इज समथिंग व्हिच इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल एंड दिस नीड नॉट कंटिन्यू सो कोर्ट इज राइट इन इशूइंग ऑर्डर्स टू द एजेंसीज ऑफ द स्टेट इन होल्डिंग देम टू अकाउंट for non implementation of these guidelines in 2018 judgment so jo judgment thi jo guidelines issue ki gayi humne discuss kiya kya guidelines issue ki gayi wo important ho jati hain and we are seeing ki they have not been implemented so it is the failure of the state however it requires no less than concerted civil society action also so civil society ka bhi important role hai to tackle this menace by sensitizing the people towards fraternal relations with other communities and avoiding type casting them as other people matlab unko categorize karna as others so obviously iske bhi uh, obviously this is not something that we desire for so yahan pe civil society action becomes important in terms of sensitization of the people and tamil nadu ka agar hum example le so where historically secular and rational movements they were active such incidents they are very rare kyunki wahan pe we see ki secular or rational movements hui hain so this is something which is not penetrated in their society and if they do occur also so dominant jo political representatives hai they face outrage from the civil society so it is like such a strong we can say community level pe people they share such a strong bonding ki aise incidences agar hote bhi hain to jo political representatives hain unko uska result 
फेस करना पड़ता है सो प्रिवेंटिंग एट्रोसिटीज ऑफ द काइंड दैट मॉब वॉयेंस रेक्स ऑन द ऑर्डिनरी सिटीजन दैट के नॉट बी लेफ्ट टू जस्ट जुडिशियल फ्लैट सिविल सोसाइटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन का इंपॉर्टेंट रोल है सबसे ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट रोल स्टेट एंड सेंटर्स का है जो सुप्रीम कोर्ट की जजमेंट आई है गाइडलाइन आई है उनको इम्प्लीमेंट करना अबाइड बाय देम इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट जैसे कि बोला सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कि प्रिंसिपल ऑब्लिगेशन है स्टेट का सो क्राइसिस ऑफ अकेडमिक एथिक्स इन इंडिया अगेन इट इज रिलेटेड टू जी एस फोर एथिक्स so the world it has long recognized india as a major player in intellectual pursuit including scientific research both science and statistics is yahan pe examples mention hai raman effect ki baat kare ramchandran plot or ya rai choudhury equations they are all examples of path breaking work in india in the 20th century so more recently we saw with a new national education policy and india's presidency of g20 it calls um, calls they have been made for the country to step up and take its position on the global stage so yeah hum zyada academics ki baat kar rahe hain so however there's an obstacle holding the nation back so this is the reality of unethical academic practice which is still widely tolerated so this is a global phenomena institutions in many countries they have kept this practice significantly in check through systematic preventive and punitive action but india may it is still you can say tolerated matlab it is happening so when research it is not ethically grounded so obviously agar aap research and development mein ho to definitely ethical angle zarur aata hai to research jab ethically grounded nahi hai there is no value in its outcome irrespective matlab fir uska outcome kuch bhi ho wo इतना इम्पोर्टेंट नहीं हो सकता है अगर आपका बेसिस ऑफ रिसर्च ही अनएथिकल है सो वी के नॉट ट्रस्ट अ मेडिसिन या कोई न्यूक्लियर रिएक्टर जिसकी एफिशिएंसी हैज बीन प्रूव बाय मैन्युपुलेटिंग डेटा सो दिस इज समथिंग देन पूरी रिसर्च करने का इतना रिसोर्सेज लगाने का कोई फायदा नहीं होगा अगर डेटा ही मैनिपुलेट किया जा रहा है तो दिस इज एन अनएथिकल एक्सरसाइज सो एवरी अकेडमिक शुड फील कंपेयर टू वीड आउट दी एथिकल माल प्रैक्टिस फ्रॉम द सिस्टम बट दिस इज नॉट है इंडिया सो दिस इज क्वाइट अनफॉर्चुनेट सो अगर इंडिया को ग्लोबल स्टेज पे रेज करना है अपने आप को इन टर्म्स ऑफ अकेडमिक्स सो ये कुछ बेसिक एंड डोमेस्टिक एंड रियल चैलेंजेस हैं जो पहले एड्रेस किए जाने इंपॉर्टेंट है then coming to absence of an ethical code so websites of almost all jo bhi academic institutions in india mein it reveals absence of an ethical code koi ethical code nahi hai koi robust investigation procedure nahi hai to deal with the misconduct allegations so this needs to be there so yahan pe basically jo challenges hain aap unko aise put up kar sakte ho ki uh, this needs to be done so two types of biggest problems are data manipulation and plagiarism so research and development may be agar india ko global stage pe it needs to you know be a power in this field to ye do cheeze address karni important hai and again ethical code hona that is also important proper investigation procedure kya steps hain kaise agar koi grievance hai to usko kya steps hain kaise wo address ki jayegi to wo obviously proper plan and क्या प्रोसीजर फॉलो करना है तो वो ना इम्पोर्टेंट है सो डेटा मैनिपुलेशन प्लेजरिज्म दोनों अनएथिकल एक्शन हैं दे आर इंक्रीजिंगली इजी टू कैरी आउट यूजिंग द सॉफ्टवेयर एंड आज के टाइम में ऑब्वियसली एक्सेस टू टेक्नोलॉजी जो है वी आर हैविंग नाउ चार्ट जीपीटी एज वेल तो उसकी केसेस और ज्यादा इंक्रीज हो सकते हैं देर इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ दैट सो चाहे आप जर्नल्स की बात करें दे पुश बैक विद मोर स्ट्रिंजेंट चेक्स so even when challenged also perpetrators they tend to shrug off the responsibility matlab agar aap pe allegation bhi lagaya ja raha hai even then you are shrugging off the responsibility so that is actually the reality in india and kuch logo ka kehna to ye bhi hai ki everyone in their institute is engaging in such practices matlab agar aapko easy way out find out karna hai to aap plagiarism ko stick karoge data manipulate kar doge taki aapka jo kaam hai wo jaldi se khatam ho jaye complete ho jaye but again uski relevance uski utility kuch nahi bachti hai for the society for india's development 
सो बाकी अगर हम इशूज की बात करें अपार्ट फ्रॉम दीज टू सो इट कम्स फ्रॉम दी अथॉरिटेरियन बिहेवियर ऑफ दोज इन पावर सो ये एक चैलेंज है रिसेंटली अगर हम प्रेजिडेंट ऑफ स्टैमफोर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी ही रिजाइंड फॉलोइंग इन्वेस्टिगेशन ऑफ हिज ओल्ड पेपर इन स्टूडेंट मैगजीन सो अगर हम इंडिया में बात करें द मैगजीन एडिटर वुड लाइकली हैव फेस्ड ट्रबल इंस्टेड रिजाइन नहीं करते वहां पे वी आर सींग की द पर्सन हैज रिजाइंड and bullying by the guides that is also documented issue in india and one guide threatened and collected thousands of rupees in fines from phd students for minor infractions such as coming 5 minutes late to a lab meeting so is tarike ke bhi cases hame dekhne ko milte hain so matlab bilkul micro level pe what are the problems hum unki baat kar rahe hain so when they are faced with the alleged misconduct in their community academics they tend to ask who are we to judge instead of encouraging impartial investigation we talking about another aspect basically you talking about ki scenario kya hai amongst the students so even in privileged institutions ki bhi agar hum baat kare cheating in examinations that is common so yahan pe hum privileged institutions ki baat kare to you can imagine the situation baki institutions mein kya mar uh, current situation hogi so brighter students they believe that they are helping their friends while honest students jo hai they are reluctant to call out cheating for fear of being disloyal so this is the common belief and this highlights the role of culture so yahan pe cultural importance aa jati hai and a japanese professor told me that if a student in his university try to cheat matlab japan mein kya system hai wahan pe kya beliefs kya culture follow kiya jata hai to he said ki students they would immediately put a stop to it so student level pe hi cheeze resolve ho jati hai so sadly but perhaps with some justification agar hum apne academic culture ki baat kare that is that is globally perceived as dishonest harming the chance of our students to compete globally so global level pe this is the perception about the indian education system that it is perceived the academic culture jo india mein hai that is dishonest because of cheating practices now coming finally to the quality of leadership so developed countries ki baat kare wahan pe jo academic leaders hai that is seen as one among equals who has taken an administrative responsibility but agar india ki position ki baat kare to it is seen primarily as a source of power and control jab hum quality of leadership ki baat kar rahe hain to so india mein it is more associated with power and control and reluctance of the leaders to act on the ethical issues that may stem from the fear ki control will pass on from them to some other objective criteria and they too may be found culpable of misconduct so india mein ye thought process rehta hai when we talk about even the leaders so jo bhi humne ethical problems ki baat kari to address them india needs a different type of behavior from its academic leaders ki baat karo which is the national interest and institutions they must also take ethics seriously and not tolerate deliberate misconduct and there must be clear communication and training honi chahiye in the expected ethical standards so that's there so again humne baat kari uh, front page pe we took up this topic of lynching and mobocracy so states lack risk lacks response so humne supreme court judgment ki baat kari kya guidelines issue ki gayi kya situation hai accountability of the state and the center so so yahan pe in detail again tehsin pune wala judgment ki baat ki gayi hai and जो अभी रीसेंट पिटिशन फाइल की गई है हाउ आर स्टेट्स रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू द कंटेम पिटिशन वॉट वर द सेवन रेमिडियल डायरेक्शन सो सेवन रेमिडियल डायरेक्शन सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने भी इशू किए थे टू द स्टेट्स सो दे इंक्लूड द अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ अ डेजिग्नेटेड नोडल ऑफिसर ये हम बात कर चुके हैं इसको डिस्कस कर चुके हैं क्या रो, क्या रोल होगा ऑफ दिस डेजिग्नेटेड नोडल ऑफिसर क्या फंक्शन इंपॉर्टेंट है सो इमीडिएट लॉन्चिंग ऑफ एन एफ आई आर अगर कोई ऐसा इंसिडेंट रिपोर्ट किया जाता है और इट कम्स इन द नोटिस ऑफ द लोकल पुलिस वो होना चाहिए इट इज द ड्यूटी ऑफ द स्टेशन हाउस ऑफिसर एस एच ओ हुजिस्टर्ड द एफ आई आर टू इन्फॉर्म द नोडल ऑफिसर इन द डिस्ट्रिक्ट 
who in turn should ensure ki families of victims hai, they are spared on of any further harassment then uh, there should be a scheme to compensate the victims of such prejudice motivated violence and agar koi failure dekha jata hai to court's direction by the police or district administration they would be considered as an act of deliberate negligence then departmental action hona chahiye it should be taken to its logical conclusion preferably within 6 months so time period be fixed hai. so this is there so what is this sam altman's biometric project so what is the world coin project how is chat gpt maker open ai related to this crypto project why has world coin been criticized and kya dangers ho sakte hain so 24 july ki baat kare open ai ke jo ceo hai sam altman he took to twitter to formally reintroduce world coin which is a project of his that will that was eclipsed by the popularity of chat gpt so world coin venture it runs on a simple model and model kya hai it allows your eyes to be scanned in order to prove your human uniqueness and receive some crypto and ek id aapko alert ki jayegi jisko bola jayega world id in exchange so world coin jo hai it claims it is building the world's largest identity and financial public network which is open to people worldwide to a global level pe kiya ja raha hai matlab jis tarike se we have the aadhar id cards in india at the national level so world coin ek global level ka similar kind of project hai but yahan pe nayi cheez kya hai ki cryptos are also involved here so what is actually world coin so it is an initiative to create a digital network jahan pe everyone can claim some kind of stake and join the digital economy so using a device that is called orb which is world coin volunteers they are known as orb operators they can scan a person's iris pattern to collect their biometric data and help them get a world id through the world app and how does it work so you can just go through it so why it scans your iris so in a company blog post it has explained ki it wanted to include everyone in its network and that using biometric information to avoid duplication it was a valid method for this because obviously everyone has their unique uh, biometrics so yahan pe you can see aadhar system b it is also based on that so why it is being criticized so it has been criticized the nsa whistleblower pointed out that even if persons biometric scans they were deleted for privacy reasons also as world coin has said ki it would do this but unique identifier for the scan would match future scans of the same person's eyes and basically kya ye india mein bhi aayega ya nahi aayega so according to the company's website it has matlab it has already come into india it has already made its entry world coin just 18 locations and largely that is in delhi noida bangalore jahan pe uh, it is scanning people's eyes so operations are already underway so australia's strategic focus island so firstly aapko location exact location pata hona chahiye so two indian military aircrafts they make a uh, visit there two planes they were at cocos island for a week which can be an important base for refueling and operational tour around for the indian armed forces and india aims to increase its military to military engagement deepening the interoperability in this indo pacific region तो इंडिया के सेमीकंडक्टर मिशन की बात करें तो इट इज नॉट जस्ट लिमिटेड टू डोमेस्टिक डिमांड एंड वी आर सीइंग री इमर्जेंस ऑफ द एक्सपोर्ट कंट्रोल्स एज अ रिस्पांस टू द स्ट्रेटजिक असर्शन ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक स्ट्रेंथ सो हाउ डू 
uh, how to do business that needs to be tempered with where and with whom to do with do uh, basically to carry out the business so trade in technology it will have to be connected or conducted by keeping in mind ki where and with whom to do it so presenting a comprehensive outlook on the center's policy on semiconductors uh, at the conference so uh, the external affairs minister he highlighted a wide variety of engagements between india and its quad partners which includes us japan and australia and said india's jo, india ka jo semiconductor mission hai, it was not limited to only domestic demand matlab uh, sirf ye main purpose nahi hai ki jo domestic demand hai usko fulfill karne ke liye we are coming up with this entire mission it also aimed to meet global requirement also matlab export sector may be it holds potential so it is for both the levels domestic and global demand Let's take up the main newspaper. So mint may room temperature, superconductor, and talking about its sustainability. So Korean researchers they have claimed to you know develop such a type of superconductor that can operate at room temperature and ambient pressure conditions. But many scientists they are skeptical about it and they're waiting to replicate the results of the research. So let's understand this topic in more detail. So it's uh, obviously an important topic from science. So why is this research making us all uh or make us making us all sit up? So क्या मतलब क्या अलग है इस research का जो results हमें मिले हैं? So from multiple South Korean institutions, they have published two papers. जिनका माना ये है कि उन्होंने room temperature पे और ambient प्रेशर कंडीशंस के अंडर एक सुपर कंडक्टर डेवलप किया है एंड इट कैन ऑपरेट एट दीज कंडीशंस सो सुपर कंडक्टिंग मटेरियल इट इज नेम्ड एल के नाइनटी नाइन इट इज अ मिक्स ऑफ पावर्ड कंपाउंड्स ऑफ लेड ऑक्सीजन सल्फर एंड फॉस्फोरस सो व्हेन इट इज हीटेड एट वेरी हाई टेम्परेचर्स एक डार्क ग्रे सॉलिड kind of thing uh, ban jata hai and if the results they can be replicated in other labs also it could be a monumental discovery for the simple reason that getting superconductors to operate at room temperature and ambient pressure is pretty much the holy grail of physics matlab this is something uh un unreal or we can say surreal jo ki expected nahi tha or was very difficult so this has been achieved agar hum inko baki labs mein bhi is result ko agar hum baki labs mein bhi use kar sakte hain agar ya wo wahan pe bhi function karega so this will be something a very huge and revolutionary discovery so are superconductors all that important so absolutely they are important so conductors ki agar hum baat kare copper gold silver aluminum they heat up because they resist electricity flow matlab jab electricity flow karti hai to resistance develop ho jati hai uski wajah se heat uh, the wires they get heated up so it we see superconductors ki agar hum baat kare to they transmit electricity with almost 100% efficiency matlab usme uh, jab electricity hum transport karte hain to wastage nahi hoti so that's why matlab 100% efficiency bahut higher uh, bolenge higher level hai which is again very difficult to achieve so they have important applicability in our daily lives so that is why agar superconductors room temperature pe work kar rahe hain karne lag jayenge at global level so that would be again hamari jo daily lives pe impact hoga that would be massive and even like uh, mri may be superconductors are uses Uh, they are used so this is now an all important health diagnostic tool also so even in the health industry also superconductors ki application bahut important hai so machines and magnetic levitation trains they are also other applications agar hum superconductors ki baat kare so jo jo superconductors room temperature pe work karne wale hain 
uh, how are they going to work so the temperature of the superconductor it is known as critical temperature and it is typically below 10 kelvin and room temperature is around 20 to 22 degrees celsius so superconductors at room temperature they can cut the cost of electricity grids computer chips magnets for uh, the maglev trains energy storage devices fusion reactors by saving electricity and money on the coolants so that's how they are going to be so important but again iske around kuch skepticism chal raha about its global or large scale applicability and again computing to computing sector ko bhi iska kuch benefit hone wala coming uh, to the quote of the day so we see uh, we are going to come back with another PSLV mission soon in August or early September. So this year itself, we are going to have exciting missions. Yeah, we are going to have Gaganyaan test vehicle, which is currently getting integrated. So Indian space sector, kya development or kya proper vision hai, that is important. So this is coming from the ISRO chairman. don't deny reality but optimize globalization whatever you have in hand you need to optimize that thing instead of denying something or ignoring or overlooking something so external affairs minister he uh, called on businesses to optimize globalization as the global supply chains they become more distributed there's already a debate underway on the downside of globalization this we have been like talking about because we are seeing developed world Joe western countries that they are now again kind of shifting more towards trade protectionism but uh, in the technology and manufacturing worlds there's a reality that cannot be reversed so this is the reality again so we need to accept that and optimize it to its best possible level so objective here is to optimize the globalization and not deny its reality and if you are heading for an era for an era of re-globalization with many more centers of production one which is clearly much more collaborative than in the past where we do not see that kind of over concentration anymore so that's what he says you need to optimize and this is a new keyword re-globalization so re-globalization or globalization make kya differences i'm expect kar rahe? that has been mentioned here like we expect more centers of production and we see more collaboration and we do not uh, wish for or do not expect the kind of over concentration anymore in terms of re-globalization. Coming to the next newspaper. So taking up financial ex so we're taking a financial express now. And let's see the important topics today. So Indian economy is likely to be the third largest economy by 2027, but growth remains stunted. So challenges, definitely a very challenge. Hai. So how amount of rate pe hame grow karna important hai? Konsa sector is important? Ho sakta hai? Aur kya development areas or initiatives chahiye? So that's all important ho jate hai, uh, when we're talking about uh, something like this. So it was rather a safe bet for the prime minister to guarantee that his third term would make India the third largest economy in the world. But Indian economy is projected to have the size of $5 trillion in 2027. And uh, that is going right now we are at, like we've already crossed $3 trillion uh, mark according to IMF. So that would be 52% jo growth hai, that would be happening in five years. And rather modest by India standards in the recent three decades and much lower than the growth rates the country aspires for. But even such growth, it would enable it to overtake Germany, 
and Japan as well. So to be on the third slot in the global economic pecking order by 2027, as these economies, they will continue to grow at the anemic rates. So we expect slowdown in these countries in Europe and talk about Eurozone recession and even Japan is expected to slow down. So that's why it is a possibility that India can overtake these countries in terms of the GDP size. So two factors have made this thing possible. That is, it was unique period when India found a number of other economies in striking distance. And second is it's relatively higher growth compared to other countries. So this thing is basically pushed up India's GDP growth compared to other countries. However, India, it will likely remain in the third slot for a very long period after securing it in 2027. So if we talk about 2027-2028, once we achieve, we are at number three in terms of the largest GDP in the world. So uske baad it is expected that we are in number 3 spot for a long time. So what will the challenges of that thing be again? That is a different area. So this is because the economy of the immediate front runner. Malab, first pe we have China and this, that would still be 5 times India's even in 2027. So even if we talk about the scenario of 2027, you know, visualize ki we have we are in 2027 and we are at number three but jo number one or number two pe hai, we talk about china also only so china ki economy ka size still indian economy se five times larger rahega. so again wahan tak pahunchne ke liye india ko thoda zyada time lagega so this is there and india's gdp agar hum current prices pe baat kare in dollar terms it grew just 83 percent between 2014 and 23 so that was against 144% between 2005 and 14 under the UPA regime. And the growth in terms of per capita GDP, ki bhi agar hum baat kare, so it was even lower rates during both the periods. So this indicates the average Indian, it hasn't seen her income or purchasing capacity risen in tandem with the GDP expansion. Well, the GDP just scale se just rate se increase hui hai. we have not seen the per capita income increasing so uske wajah se kahin na kahin ek tarike se negative impact hua hai on the purchasing power of the people so indian economy size in dollar terms nearly doubled in 8 years and it had doubled in 4 years between 2004 5 to 2007 8 fastest growth period tha, this is like between 2004 and 2007 ke beech mein this was the fastest growth period for India. So it was held by a combination of high growth and relatively strong rupee. So again, uh, when we talk about economy, so you have to important that which important indicators are that we analyze the performance ko analyze and assess karenge in terms of knowing the strength or kis malab, uh, intensity se, kis kitani higher speed se Indian economy or speed se grow kar sakti hai. So, just data ke bhi humne just baat kari, wo yahan pe it is all, you know, in the form of graphs depict kar rakha hai. Another component which is driving food inflation is spices. So, seeded inflation ki hum kaafi baat karte hai hai, but spices may be we are seeing prices going up. Chai ab jiro ki baat karo, coriander ya haldi ki baat karo. So, turmeric, coriander, and jiro, they are costlier as bad weather hits the output. So, this is something which is not under our control. And definitely, but policy, we need to have a, such a type of policy ki we are able to control the situation agar aisa kuch hota hai. So right now, government ka jo public sector ka role hai, wo are important ho jayega. Hmm. 
now we'll take up hindustan times so pslv puts singaporean satellites into orbit and jivar airports first test flight likely in march 2024 so this is their number theory ki baat kare so let's see kya topic hai can fuel prices ease the serial inflation pain matlab again yahan pe crude क्रूड ऑयल प्राइजेस के बीच में और सीरियल इन्फ्लेशन के बीच में क्या कोई लिंकेज है कि अगर फ्यूल प्राइसेस कम हो रहे हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं क्या वो हमें सीरियल इन्फ्लेशन को कम करने में हेल्प कर सकता है कि नहीं सो ये क्वेश्चन पूछ रहा है सो प्रोस्पेक्ट ऑफ कॉन्टिन्यूड टाइटनेस इन द सीरियल मार्केट ओवर कंसर्न द रेन रिलेटेड एडवर्सिटी ऑब्वियसली दिस इज समथिंग विच इज नॉट इन आर कंट्रोल बट अगेन कहीं ना कहीं ये बोल सकते हैं कि फिर हमारे कंट्रोल में भी है क्योंकि इट इज अल्टीमेटली बिकॉज ऑफ द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज जिस तरीके से इम्पैक्ट एस्केलेट हो रहे हैं तो इट इज मोर बिकॉज ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्शन सो एंथोपोलॉजिक जो फैक्टर्स हैं उसकी वजह से हो रहे हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं डायरेक्ट डायरेक्टली इट इज नॉट रिलेटेड बट कहीं ना कहीं इट इज ऑल बिकॉज ऑफ What we as humans uh, क्या हमारे एक्शन रहते तो अल्टीमेटली उसी का रिजल्ट है दर कंडीशन टॉक अबाउट सो वी सी की टाइटनेस इन दीरियल मार्केट इट हैज जनरेटेड अपसाइड रिस्क टू इंडिया इन्फ्लेशन प्रोस्पेक्ट वन इट कम्स टू फूड प्राइसेस देर इज वेरी लिटिल इन्फ्लेशन टारगेटिंग दैट मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी कैन अचीव क्योंकि मॉनिटरी पॉलिसी की अगर हम बात करें तो वो कहीं ना कहीं डिमांड साइड ऑफ द इन्फ्लेशन मतलब the factors which influence the demand usko control karne ke liye monetary policy zyada effective hai compared to if uh, we are seeing supply disruptions to uske us case mein we see fiscal policy ka role zyada important ho jata hai so inflation targeting works on the premise of higher interest rates deflating the demand and deflating the food demand it is not a palatable option at all in democracy so there is however good reason to believe ki fiscal policy that can play a positive role in controlling inflation this is the same thing jo maine abhi aap logo ko bola and energy prices they have fallen faster than the grain prices after the ukraine war so ukraine war ki wajah se bhi uh, that is also one of the reasons why we are seeing food inflation and एनर्जी प्राइजेज ऑल दो कम हुए हैं बट फूड प्राइजेस कंपेरेटिवली ज्यादा हायर लेवल पे हैं और वे सिंग मोर इन्फ्लेशन इन दीरियल्स सो इंटरनेशनल जो क्रूड ऑयल प्राइजेज हैं दैट इज मूविंग इन टैंडम विद जैसे भी ग्लोबल प्राइजेज में यहाँ चेंज देखने को मिल रहा है बट इंडिया में जो रिटेल रेट्स है क्रूड ऑयल के जो प्राइसेस है पेट्रोल डीजल के प्राइसेस है वो सिमिलर प्रोपोर्शन पे चेंज नहीं हो रहे हैं तो वहां पे वी आर सीइंग सम गैप एंड अगर इसको हम समझे यू कैन सी दिस पर्पल कलर इज फॉर द सीओबी प्राइस सीओबी इज बेसिकली इंडिया क्रूड ऑयल बास्केट इसका प्राइस है दिस इज मतलब इंटरनेशनल प्राइस कहीं ना कहीं आप इसको मान के चल सकते हो दिस इज एट सेवेंटी मतलब इसमें यू कैन सी कि यहाँ इस टाइम पीरियड से वी आर सींग फॉल बट अगर आप डीजल और पेट्रोल के प्राइसेस देखोगे तो उसमें कोई भी चेंज नहीं आया है फ्रॉम द टाइम पीरियड जब इंटरनेशनल या फिर पूरे जो क्रूड ऑयल बास्केट के प्राइसेस कम हो रहे हैं या इट इज फॉलिंग तो मतलब दोनों चीजें सिंक में होनी चाहिए विद द इंटरनेशनल प्राइसेस सो वो हमें हेल्प कर सकता है इन यू नो कंट्रोलिंग इन्फ्लेशन इन इंडिया क्योंकि उसकी वजह से कहीं ना कहीं जो ट्रांसपोर्टेशन कॉस्ट है वो थोड़ी कम हो सकेगी एंड वी कैन यू नो स्टिल गेट सम ब्रीदर एट फूड इन्फ्लेशन सो फ्यूल प्राइसेस दे आर स्टिल फीडिंग इनटू इन्फ्लेशन एंड व्हाई इज दिस रूट नॉट बीइंग एक्सप्लोर्ड सो द रीजन कैन बी कि गवर्नमेंट इज होपिंग टू डिप्लॉय सेविंग्स फ्रॉम दिस रूट समवेयर एल्स मतलब जो अमाउंट गवर्नमेंट एक्स्ट्रा इट इज एबल टू अर्न Because internationally crude oil prices fall हो रहे हैं but retail prices are not changing. तो जो extra amount government के पास आया in terms of profits या tax revenue आप कुछ भी बोल सकते हो तो it might be possible की government might be thinking of you know using that amount somewhere else. So it could be aimed at medium term fiscal consolidation also because uh, fiscal deficit levels they are also still quite high. तो जो additional revenue है जो गवर्नमेंट बेसिकली गिव अप कर सकती है तो कहीं ना कहीं वो अभी इस करंट सिचुएशन में इट इज अ पॉसिबिलिटी हम सोच सकते हैं कि फिजिकल डेफिसिट को कंट्रोल करने के लिए भी वो हमारे लिए बेनिफिट करेगा 
and the fact that there is no political pressure to bring down the prices in keeping with the crude prices, it has clearly helped the government in continuing with this policy. So, there is no political pressure, nahi hai, so that's why government continues with this policy. So even in China, we are seeing the flood threat, Matlab, not just in India, but globally, sub countries, may we are seeing kahi na kahi, uh, severe impacts of climate change. Chahe aap poor air quality ki baat karo, ya phir forest fires ki baat karo, flooding ki baat karo, rising sea levels ki baat karo, retreating glaciers ki baat karo. So kahi na kahi, we are seeing ke the intensity and frequency is increasing at the global level. So according to NCB, it says that Pakistan cartel jo hai, it is sending drugs into India via the sea. So sea route ke through drugs, they are entering into the Indian markets. Narcotics Control Bureau ka manna hai. And we talk about Golden Crescent, Golden Triangle. So when we talk about basically Golden Crescent, so that is towards uh, the western side of the Indian border, matlab Pakistan wala area mein. So Iske alawa, kya law hai India mein wo pata hona chahiye and how it is impacting the youth, kya economic repercussions ho sakte hai, economic consequences ho sakte hai for the growth of the country because again, agar wo youth population ko impact kar rahe, toh kahin na kahin it is impacting the demographic dividend. Then mental health wali cheez a zakti hai ki why basically the youth or people, they get attracted towards drugs. So it is also because of the mental health, kind of, that also plays an important role. So climate is at core of the India's G20 agenda. So you need to know that G20 agenda, if we talk about G20 agenda, what priority is for us? So from land degradation to ocean and water management and developing climate resilience is sare keywords and discussions and the outcomes during India's G20 presidency. It can become global markers to measure progress in these critical areas. So G20 countries, ke agar baat kare, toh they are home to about two thirds of the world's population, 85% GDP and 75% of the international trade. So they account for about 45% the coastline, 21% the exclusive economic zones. So given this backdrop, collective resolve towards the environment and climate sustainability, it has rightly been recognized as a key priority under G20 to secure a better future for our planet. So, if we talk about Indian initiatives ke baat kare in terms of tackling climate change, so we launched International Solar Alliance, Coalition for Disaster and Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, Mission Life, and then International Big Cat Alliance. So, there are Indian initiatives. Hai. And we also talked about the concept of circular economy, that is a key driver of sustainable development.
यू कैन सी ब्लू और द ओशन बेस्ड इकोनॉमी ब्लू इकोनॉमी की हम बात करते हैं सो द प्रिंसिपल दे विल गाइड फर्दर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द एक्शन ओरिएंटेड स्ट्रेटेजीज so it would basically help countries to transition to sustainable and resilient blue or ocean based economy specifically the island countries unke liye blue economy ek uh, important area hai to explore further then gig economy ki agar hum baat kare to the gig law it can shape the 21st century welfare models सो जो जनरल डायमेंशन जो जनरल थीम है अराउंड दी गिग इकोनॉमी वो पता होना इम्पोर्टेंट है वो तो ऑलरेडी सबको पता है कि क्या चीजें पता होनी चाहिए सो वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कि प्रॉपर एक कॉम्प्रिहेंसिव लॉ होना चाहिए अबाउट द राइट ऑफ द गिग वर्कर्स एंड राजस्थान असेंबली इट इज कमिंग अप विद वन सच बिल सो उसको हम ऑलरेडी पहले एनालाइज कर चुके हैं एंड क्या इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोविजन है इस बिल में क्या और आ सकता है वॉट इज मिसिंग दैट वी ऑलरेडी टेकन अप तो मोरक्को मेक्स हिस्ट्री विद फर्स्ट विन इन अ वर्ल्ड कप गेम सो यहाँ पे हम बात कर रहे हैं फीफा फीमेल और वुमेन वर्ल्ड कप की सो एडलेड में सिंग ऑस्ट्रेलिया में मैचेस आर गोइंग ऑन सो मोरक्को मेड हिस्ट्री इन मल्टीपल वेज ड्यूरिंग देयर वन जीरो विक्ट्री ओवर साउथ कोरिया इन द वुमेन्स वर्ल्ड कप टॉकिंग बाय द फीफा फुटबॉल वर्ल्ड कप एंड यू कैन सी द डिफेंडर she became the first player to wear a hijab in a world cup game at the senior level and her teammate scored the atlas lionesses first world cup goal so moroccans they scored in the 6th minute and they were able to make it stand up for the remainder of the match so morocco they scored their first ever world cup goal when we see they met across the players they met across so it's a very big thing for morocco and you can basically see ki how uh, basically their dedication their passion has brought them to this thing despite you know matlab obviously at the local level even in their country societal level unhone bahut sare challenges face kiye honge there would be concerns and challenges about their training the you know inadequate resources honge so you can just imagine ki kis situation se uthke they have come up to this position today so they were unable to translate the advantage into many scoring opportunities as well so this is again from the perspective of gs4 ethics you can understand this thing now we'll take up the times of india so just we'll just go through important articles jo abhi tak humne discuss nahi kiye so you can see drones ko hum kaise use kar rahe hain in tackling the dengue cases so it would be basically attacking the larvae so drones would be doing this activity so government is going to intensify awareness campaigns and hospitals are also on alert so we are seeing increase in dengue cases specifically after the flooding in delhi but you can just you know understand ki how drone technology ko hum kaise use kar sakte at the local level the micro level so it would be basically increasing the efficiency and efficiency of the operations saving time and cost
so taking or you can making tradition as your habit so aap iske bare mein aur soch sakte ho ki how traditions you can you know basically following your traditions in your daily life can shape and it can help in solving the current challenges jo hum face kar rahe hain chahe ab aap usko climate change se relate karke socho ya economically aap usko socho so when we regard the traditions in today's day and age with a contemporary lens matlab basically obviously seeing traditions through the contemporary lens it is usually with some suspicion so this is understandable also because in the name of past we can justify many practices that are impractical and more importantly regressive also ye thoda negative tone mein likha hua hai but again aapko thoda jo sochna hai positive aspect ki how making tradition as a, as a habit it can help in solving the everyday life challenges and even challenges of the broader scale also so prime minister said that inscriptions are going to be installed in the panchayats to hail the martyrs so he launches meri meri marti mera desh campaign ahead of the independence day so he announced the launch of meri marti mera desh campaign in the run up to the independence day to honor the martyred brave hearts of the country with special inscriptions to be installed in the panchayats in their memory so this was mentioned in the man ki baat episode so a amrit vatika would be built near the national war memorial by fusing the soil and saplings that will arrive in 7500 urns so this amrit vatika it will become a grand symbol of ek bharat shreshth bharat and under the ongoing amrit mahotsav to mark the 75th anniversary of independence over 2 lakh programs they have been organized so this initiative meri mati mera desh it will recall the memory of those brave men and women who laid down their lives for the country so india created a unique record of destroying 10 lakh kg of drugs so hailing the youth's participation in the campaigns against the drug use prime minister said india would create a, india had created a unique record of destroying 10 lakh kg of drugs worth more than rupees 12000 crores so since we were talking about this also so you can see and country uh, that have to save future generations we have to keep them away from the drugs so kaise aap ensure karoge the youth it remains away from the drug so that is important and it's important to fight the problem so it's necessary that we all move in unison again fir ek uh, another social dimension aa jata hai of social stigma that is associated so drug addicts aap unko kaise tackle karoge then aap kaise prevention ensure karoge and as i mentioned ki mental health ki wajah se bhi kahi na kahi people they fall into this trap so us cheez ko bhi address karne ki zarurat hai
तो सीरियल इन्फ्लेशन की हम बात कर रहे थे सीरियल स्कॉलर हमने देखा कि हाउ इट इज लिंक टू इवन द क्रूड ऑयल प्राइसेस सो डोंट बी अ सीरियल स्पॉयलर सो इंडिया डोमिनेट्स द वर्ल्ड राइस एक्सपोर्ट एंड एक्सपोर्ट बैन इट ड्राइव अप द ग्लोबल फूड इन्फ्लेशन एंड दिस अंडूज इयर्स ऑफ हार्ड वर्क तो कहीं ना कहीं वी कैन से दैट वी आर अगेन बैक टू द स्केयर वन जहाँ से हमने स्टार्ट किया था ग्लोबल लेवल की अगर हम बात करें बट अगेन यहाँ पे भी सीरियल इन्फ्लेशन के कॉन्टेक्स में भी हमने काफी सारे डिमेंशन एक्सप्लोर कर चुके हैं ऑलरेडी कि सबसे पहले कि एक्सपोर्ट बैन करना राइस एक्सपोर्ट बैन करना इट इज द राइट डिसीजन और नॉट क्या हमारे पास और कोई ऑल्टरनेटिव है वेन वी टॉक अबाउट स्पेसिफिकली इंडिया अगर हमने एक्सपोर्ट बैन किया है एक्सपेक्टिंग कि आने वाले टाइम में राइस के जो प्राइसेस है वो इंक्रीज होंगे तो इन ऑर्डर टू मेंटेन एडिक्वेट डोमेस्टिक सप्लाई वी हैव डिसाइडेड कि हम वर्ल्ड एक्सपोर्ट बैन कर देंगे फॉर द टाइम पीरियड जब तक थोड़ा मतलब प्राइसेस दे डोंट कम अंडर कंट्रोल तो इंस्टेड ऑफ बैनिंग द एक्सपोर्ट्स क्या हम कहीं ना कहीं इम्पोर्ट करके भी वी कैन इंश्योर की एडिक्वेट सप्लाई वी आर हैविंग दैट मच ऑफ एडिक्वेट सप्लाई कि प्राइसेस इतने ज्यादा एस्केलेट ना हो या डिमांड सप्लाई मिसमैच ना हो क्योंकि अगर हम एक्सपोर्ट बैन करेंगे तो ऑब्वियसली जो ग्लोबल इन्फ्लेशन ग्लोबल फूड इन्फ्लेशन है वो भी कहीं ना कहीं इंक्रीज होगी सो so, अगर हम करंट राइस स्टॉक्स की बात करें जो हमारे पास बफर स्टॉक है विद द एफ सी आई दैट इज एट फोर्टी वन एम एम टी एंड दिस इज थ्री टाइम्स मोर देन जो हमारा बफर नॉम है बफर होना चाहिए अराउंड थर्टीन पॉइंट फाइव मिलियन मेट्रिक टन बट वी आर एट फोर्टी वन मिलियन मेट्रिक टन सो दिस इज थ्री टाइम्स जितना बफर नॉम्स होना चाहिए बट स्टिल उसके बावजूद भी वी हैव बैन द एक्सपोर्ट्स एंड Also, area sown under the paddy on 29 July that is also marginally higher than the previous year. So, आने वाले time में भी जो harvest होगा उसके वजह से भी we can see कि supply में इतनी problem नहीं होने वाली है until and unless मतलब monsoon remains good. सो so, अभी तक तो डोमेस्टिक सिचुएशन इज कंफर्टेबल सो ये सारे नुआंसेज हैं कि पॉलिसी टर्म्स में बेसिकली क्या हमारे पास और ऑल्टरनेटिव है इंस्टेड ऑफ बैनिंग द राइस एक्सपोर्ट्स नाउ विल टेक अप इंडियन एक्सप्रेस लास्टली देख लेते हैं और क्या इम्पोर्टेंट टॉपिक्स हैं आई थिंक वी कैन डायरेक्टली मूव ऑन टू एडिटोरियल एंड द एक्सप्लेन सेक्शन सो फॉरेस्ट कंजर्वेशन एक्ट का जो अमेंडमेंट बिल है क्या प्रोविजन है क्या कंसर्न है ऑलरेडी डिस्कस कर चुके हैं कि फॉरेस्ट की जो नई डेफिनेशन है कहीं ना कहीं इट इज पॉइंटिंग टूवर्ड्स डायल्यूशन ऑफ दिस एक्ट तो प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट बायोडाइवर्सिटी उसके ऊपर क्वेश्चंस रेज हो रहे हैं सो so, मेजर अगर ये समरी है पूरी चीज की अगर आप लोगों ने मतलब पहले नहीं समझा है क्या पूरा इसका क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस है या तो आप प्रीवियस वीडियो देख सकते हो या यू कैन गो थ्रू दिस आर्टिकल मॉनसून एंड फूड इन्फ्लेशन अगेन सेम रिपीटेड टॉपिक एल नीनो आपको पता होना चाहिए लालीना पता होना चाहिए जो बेसिक कंसेप्ट है ये आपको क्लियर होने चाहिए सो दिस इज अ टॉपिक फ्रॉम हिस्ट्री वाजिद अली शाह आफ्टर अवध सो हाउ डिपोज नवाब रिसेक्टेड हिस्स कोर्ट सो 
20 uh, sorry on 30th july uh, it was basically it is the 201st birth anniversary of wajid ali shah who's the last nawab on the throne of avad so first see avad is also you know bahut important area ya yeah. we can say center of attraction right when we talk about history and it was seen as a symbol of power so first part of wajid ali shah's story that of his dethronement in 1856 on the charges of misgovernance and debauchery uh is well known so 1856 may he was removed from the position and his generous and refined patronage of the arts his poetic talents have also been acknowledged so he was a good poet matlab in terms of arts also he was a very skilled person so but the last 30 years of his life ki agar hum baat kare to that is spent in calcutta best highlight the unique character of his personality who never forget forgot he was a king and never let the british forget it also so the exile and imprisonment wale period ki baat kare so after avad who was taken away by the company east india company wajid ali shah and his family they plan to plead their case directly with the queen victoria in england nawab his mother uh, and his brother they landed in calcutta with their uh, retinue for this purpose however once they reached calcutta the plans changed ho gaye the dowager queen and her other son left for england so while wajid ali shah they stayed behind and he was allotted a residence in the garden reach also and he was imprisoned at fort william where he remained captive for 2 years so 2 years he was there in the imprisonment so after he was finally freed he was allowed to move to garden reach and he quickly set about establishing a fox version of the kingdom he had to give up ironically getting the british to finance some of it so he created a ghost court once he was free so garden reach which is a 2 mile stretch by the hooghly river it was the area where high ranking company officials they had built the country homes so along with a monthly pension of rupees 1 lakh he was also allotted bungalow um, that was named as sultan khana so he had been followed from lucknow by a large number of his wives children's ministers and bodyguards so two adjoining bungalows there were also to be rented and avad party built houses and huts in their large garden so eventually nawab he got the british to buy all three properties for him so matlab this is not so important from the perspective of examination matlab he is just telling ki what all went in his life so reforms in the india statistical system ye bhi hum kafi baat kar chuke every day basis we were seeing articles so definitely requires reforms and investment in the state of the art technologies so data manipulation hi agar kiya jayega ya quality of data pe questions raise kiye jayenge to puri exercise would be futile because data is the foundation for any policy for any scheme and to assess the performance सो so, अगर डेटा में ही हमें प्रॉब्लम्स मिलेंगी तो अगेन ऑब्वियसली जो जो चीजें डेटा के ऊपर बेस्ड हैं वहां पे भी कॉम्प्लिकेशंस आएंगी सो फर्स्टली वी शुड रिकॉग्नाइज दैट देयर इज प्रॉब्लम पहले तो यही अक्नोलेज एंड एक्सेप्ट करना कि स्टैटिस्टिकल सिस्टम में प्रॉब्लम है सो so, उसको फिक्स उसी के बाद किया जाएगा जब तक आप एक्सेप्ट नहीं करोगे तो ऑब्वियसली इम्प्रूवमेंट भी नहीं हो सकती है सो डिफेंडिंग द स्टैटिस्टिकल सिस्टम ये कोई सोल्यूशन नहीं है नेशनल स्टैटिस्टिकल ऑफिस इट हैज बीन कलेक्टिंग डेटा प्रमारली थ्रू एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एंड सैम्पल सर्विस बोथ ऑफ विच दे हैव देयर ओन स्ट्रेंथ्स एंड चैलेंजेस बट डेटा कलेक्शन फ्रॉम द एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव सोर्सेज दैट इज मोर ऑफ इकोनॉमिकल इन नेचर एंड लेस टाइम कंज्यूमिंग होता है बट कुछ चैलेंजेस भी हैं इन टर्म्स ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिवनेस एंड जो सैम्पल सर्विस हैं वो कॉस्टलियर होते हैं बोथ इन टर्म्स ऑफ मनी ऑल्सो एंड जो टाइम उनमें जाते हैं so updation of the census frame it was used for most surveys needs to be digitized and made accessible to improve quality of the service so digitization ek reform area hai second the national statistical system needs to expand and diversify the resource base of the data so it should include new and emerging sources jaise ki big data can be a part that can be leveraged processing through machine learning artificial intelligence 
सो ये एक रेगुलेटेड तरीके से इंक्लूड किए जाने चाहिए थर्डली बात करें स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द नेशनल सिस्टम इज इंटीग्रली डिपेंडेड ऑन द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द स्टेट स्टैटिस्टिकल सिस्टम सो स्टेट लेवल पे भी जो स्टैटिस्टिकल सिस्टम वर्क कर रहा है उसकी स्ट्रेंथ भी इंपॉर्टेंट है सो इन दिस डायरेक्शन वी हैव द ढोलकिया कमेटी रिपोर्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी एंड इट कुड पेव द वे फॉर द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इन परसुइंग एंड अडोप्टिंग अ बॉटम अप अप्रोच देर बाय स्ट्रेंथनिंग डेटा कलेक्शन कैपेसिटीज ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ऑल्सो तो यहाँ पे हमने स्टेट लेवल पे भी बात कर ली एंड कुछ पैरल एफर्ट्स भी रिक्वायर्ड हैं टू एनहेंस एंड इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज इंटर एजेंसी कोऑर्डिनेशन कवरिंग बोथ नेशनल एंड सब नेशनल स्टैटिस्टिकल सिस्टम सो जो ऑन गोइंग डिबेट है दैट इज मोर अराउंड द रूरल अर्बन डिवाइड रिलेटेड डेफिनेशनल इश्यूज जो एड्रेस किए जाने चाहिए सो ये बेसिक है देन वी कैन लाइक लर्न फ्रॉम द लेसन दैट मे नीड टू बी ड्रॉन फ्रॉम द नेशनल एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ improving weather predictions also so few decades ago weather forecast ki agar hum baat kare to they used to be subject of various jokes and current time period mein we see ki weather forecasting ki jo accuracy hai definitely that is improved and we have used super computers to develop and evolve the advanced numerical models matlab yahan pe aap ye seekh sakte ho ki ye lesson hum le sakte hain ki weather forecasting mein how technology has uh, played an important role in terms of improving the accuracy of data or accuracy of forecast and prediction so similarly statistical system may be technology ka role bahut important ho jata hai then we see ki underlying tenet of any official agar hum statistical system ki baat kare to that is resource availability now resource in terms of physical resource human resource financial and technological resource so availability accessibility then uh, Do you know how to use them? The technology that we have. So, ये एक important चीज हो जाती है. तो ये कहीं ना कहीं हमें efficiency, quality, timeliness, completion में help करेगी. So, all of this is required to catalyze and synergize the reforms in the statistical system. So, smart ideas for big cities. Cities they must take lead on climate change rather than simply reacting. कि जो भी uh, हमें मतलब एज एन इवेंट और एज एन इम्पैक्ट ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज जो भी इवेंट आज हम गोइंग थ्रू इंस्टेड ऑफ रिएक्टिंग टू दैट वी नीड की सिटीज दे आर बेटर प्रिपेयर टू डील विद दैम एंड इंस्टेड ऑफ परसुइंग द स्मार्ट सिटीज वी शुड इन्वेस्ट इन रेन वाटर हार्वेस्टिंग एंड बेटर ड्रेनेज सो दिस इज मोर अराउंड स्मार्ट सिटीज एंड क्लाइमेट चेंज सो वो कहीं ना कहीं देट नीड्स टू बी देयर इन द स्मार्ट सिटी प्लानिंग सो यू कैन जस्ट गो थ्रू दिस आर्टिकल एंड यू कैन टेक ऑन द इम्पॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स so if we talk about the growth in the per capita income so say we are seeing that it is growing nearly 70% to $4000 by financial year 30 2030 so india's per capita income is likely to grow from right now it is at $2500 in the current fiscal as per the standard chartered bank report so you can see ki how this a per capita income has increased from 2001 to 2021 बट अगेन अगर हम बात करते कि वील बी एट फोर थाउजेंड डॉलर ऑफ पर कैपिटल इनकम बाई ट्वेंटी थर्टी तो ग्लोबल लेवल पे वी कम्पेयर सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी लेस सो ये कहीं ना कहीं हम इस डायमेंशन की बात करते हैं जब हम बात कर रहे हैं कि बाई ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सेवन वी एक्सपेक्ट इंडिया टू बी अ डेवलप्ड कंट्री तो उस केस में दिस इज वन डायमेंशन की तब तक हमारी पर कैपिटल इनकम कितनी इंक्रीज होगी बट स्टिल अगर हम कंपेयर करें चाइना से और बाकी डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज यूएसए की पर कैपिटल इनकम से तो वो स्टिल बहुत लोअर लेवल पे होगी सो so, हम कैसे अचीव करेंगे कि हमारी पर कैपिटल इनकम एक्सपोनेंशियली इंक्रीज हो वो चीजें आ जाती हैं सो so, एक्सपर्ट्स का मानना ये कि आरबीआई में मेंटेन स्टेटस को ऑन इंटरेस्ट रेट्स कि इंटरेस्ट रेट चेंज दे आर एक्सपेक्टिंग एक्सपर्ट्स दे आर एक्सपेक्टिंग की इंटरेस्ट रेट में चेंजेस नहीं किए जाएंगे इन द अपकमिंग एमपीसी मीटिंग व्हिच वुड बी देयर ऑन एट टू टेंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट सो लेट्स सी हमारे लिए एक्चुअल डिसीजन ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है कंपेयर टू द एक्सपेक्टेशंस 
so lenders they start making uh, provisions ahead of the RBI's final guidelines on ECL. So ECL is the expected credit loss. So is keeper RBI ne kuch guidelines issue ki hai. So that is based on provisioning by the banks. Some lenders they have started building up the provisions even before migration to the new ECL regime. So provisioning ke baare mein ek to aapko understanding honi chahiye ki provisioning ka matlab kya hota hai. I'm talking about banks. And higher provisions kya अगर हायर अमाउंट और या हायर लेवल ऑफ प्रोविजनिंग की जाती है तो उसका क्या इम्प्लीकेशन होता है व्हाट वी कैन अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम दैट दैट इज वन थिंग हायर प्रोविजंस दे आर बेस्ड ऑन इंटरनल असेसमेंट्स व्हिच इज डन बाय द लेंडर्स बेसिकली बैंक्स ऑन रिक्वायर्ड लोन लॉस प्रोविजंस अंडर द प्रपोज्ड फ्रेमवर्क सो जितना ज्यादा वी एक्सपेक्ट कि लॉस अगर हम ज्यादा एक्सपेक्ट कर रहे हैं या रिस्क बहुत ज्यादा है किसी पर्टिकुलर लोन से रिलेटेड तो अगेन उसके लिए प्रोविजनिंग हाई होनी चाहिए बट अगेन प्रोविजनिंग अगर हाई होगी बैंक मतलब अगर ज्यादा अमाउंट ऑफ पैसा साइड में आइडल रखेंगे आफ्टर गिविंग अ पर्टिकुलर लोन तो बैंक की जो लेंडिंग कैपेसिटी है वो कम हो जाती है सो दैट्स हाउ इट इज लिंक्ड सो एफ पी आई बाइंग स्प्री इट कॉन्टिन्यूज एंड देव इन्वेस्टेड अराउंड फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव करोड रुपीज इन द मंथ ऑफ जुलाई इन द इंडियन कैपिटल मार्केट तो कहीं ना कि जो बुलिशनेस है या हम देखते हैं ऑब्वियसली जब ईसी इनफ्लो ऑफ द कैपिटल तो ईसी सम बुलिश सेंटिमेंट्स एंड अगेन यहाँ पे ग्लोबल पिक्चर के कॉन्टेक्स्ट में अगर आप इंडिया की करंट परफॉर्मेंस देखो तो दैट इज ऑब्वियसली वेरी गुड एंड दैट्स व्हाट इज अट्रैक्टिंग द फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर्स एंड दे आर इन्वेस्टिंग हैविली इन द इंडियन मार्केट्स बट अगेन एफ पी एस से रिलेटेड कुछ कंसर्न भी है वी यू नो एसोसिएट जो भी पैसा वो इंडिया में इन्वेस्ट करते हैं दैट इज कॉल्ड हॉट मनी तो जो उसमें वॉलिटिलिटी है वो बहुत ज्यादा है तो कहीं ना कहीं जो हमारा एक्सचेंज रेट वॉलिटिलिटी है फ्लक्चुएशन है उसके ऊपर भी नेगेटिव इम्पैक्ट करते हैं सो इफ दे आर इन्वेस्टिंग राइट नाउ हैवली तो कहीं ना कहीं इट इज एन इंडिकेशन टूवर्ड्स स्ट्रेंथनिंग ऑफ रूपी एज वेल so on this note that's all for today and thank you so much for joining us in this video session i hope that the diversity of topics that we took up today uh, would have helped you in much more clarity and understanding and shaping your own perspective about different topics so that's all and do subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for the video